Kita bosa saya sih Kwanu kwa piti saya sih Kita buya bosa saya sih Kuzi na pita tuzi na omega tuzi na alfa saya sih The Science Foundation College in Namavu kwe jinja Ngo ingi la kilomite mm. So minuli ya dene boarding Eli haba wala naba lenzi Ku olevo tusomisa arts ni sciences Ate elevo tusomisa sciences zoka Umwana mletu ku The Science Foundation College Fetu singo kusomisa sciences Okumanya bisinga o Kwa ku 0 musambu 5 satu Chinana Abili musambu 0 muenda The Science Foundation College Best on sciences And best for sciences is a teacher at the Science Foundation College, the best school that teaches sciences. At A level, we teach sciences only. At all level, we teach arts and sciences. Today, we are going to study equilibrium of a solute between immiscible solvents. Distribution law states that at a constant temperature a solute distributes itself between immiscible solvents at equilibrium in a constant ratio or when a solute is dissolved in two immiscible solvents in contact the concentration of the solute in one solvent over the concentration of a solute in another solvent is constant at equilibrium provided the temperature is constant. Distribution or partition coefficient or constant. This is a constant ratio of the concentration of a solute in one solvent over the concentration of a solute in another immiscible solvent at equilibrium and at a given temperature. For instance, the distribution of constant of a solute C between the two immiscible solvents A and B at a given temperature is given as Kd is equal to concentration of C in the solvent A over the concentration of C in the solvent B. The first solvent is the numerator, the second solvent is the denominator. Limitation of partition law, the solution is must be dilute or none of the solvents should be saturated. Then two, the solute must be in the same physical state in both solvents. If it is not ionized in one solvent, it must not be ionized in another solvent. If it is ionized in one solvent, it must be ionized in another solvent. Then free, the temperature must be constant because the temperature affects the solubility of a solute differently in the two solvents. Application 1, solvent extraction. Here, a solute dissolved in water is transferred to an organic solvent from which it can be removed easily. What has got very high boiling point, very high specific heat capacity, very high specific latent heat of evaporation. So evaporating a kilogram of water which contains a solute may need a lot of energy. But transferring the solute into another solvent which can be evaporated easily, can save energy and reduce the cost of production. For instance, if you have got your iodine solution and you have an organic solvent, which is immiscible in water, we can transfer part of the iodine from iodine solution into the organic solvent from which iodine can be obtained easily. We add an organic solvent to this solution this solution is immiscible, we can shake. In this experiment, we can see that part of the iodine has been transferred from aqueous solution into an organic layer. 
these two layers can be separated by a separating funnel. The organic layer then evaporated and the iodine recovered. But not all iodine go away. In our calculation, we are going to find out how much iodine you can extract from water. Example one. Catch the mass of iodine that can be extracted from a hundred centimeter tube of water containing one gram of iodine. One by a hundred centimeter tube of ether, then two by two fifty centimeter tube of ether consecutively. KD between ether and water is equal to 4. So the scenario is that you have initially a hundred centimeter cubed of water containing one gram of iodine. Containing containing one gram of iodine. Then we add a hundred centimeter cube of ether. Initially there was one gram here. Supposing x gram go here, here we shall remain with one minus x. In our previous demonstration, we saw that when iodine is in water and we add an organic layer, part of iodine will move from water to an organic layer. So supposing X grams have come here, at, at, at first there was one gram in this aqueous layer, it means that X go here, X grams, here we shall remain with one minus X. 1 minus x. Then the concentration of iodine in ether is equal to x over 100 mass over volume. Concentration of iodine in water is equal to 1 minus x over 100. But our KD is equal to concentration of iodine in ether. Ether was written in first. Concentration of iodine in ether over concentration of iodine in water. Then it means that 4, which is our KD, is equal to x over 100 over 1 minus x over 100. This is equal to x over 100 times 100 over 1 minus x. This one will go. Then it means that 4 into 1 minus x will be equal to x. Then 4 will be equal to 4x to 5x and x will be equal to 0 0.80 grams. Therefore, in the first part, 0 0.80 grams of iodine have been extracted. Part 2, the scenario remains unchanged except that now we first use the first 50 centimeter tube of ether. Again, X grams will go into ether, part two, 250 grams and 100. Again, our four, KD will be called the concentration of iodine in ether, which is X over 50 over concentration of iodine in water, which is one minus X over over 100 and this one 
will be equal to 2x over over 1 minus x it means that 4 into 1 minus x is equal to 2 to 2x 6x is equal to 4 x to 4 over 6 which is, which is equal to 2 over 3 grams the mass of iodine remained in the water after removing 2 over 3 grams of iodine will be 1 minus 2 over 3 which is equal to 1 over 3 again the second scenario will be this time we have 100 centimeter cubed of water containing 1 over 3 grams of iodine then you add another 50 50 centimeter cubed of ether Supposing y grams go here, here remain with 1 over 3 minus y. The mass which will remain, again 4 will be equal to y over 50 over a third minus y over 100. Which will be equal to y two y over a third minus y it implies that four into a third minus y will be equal to 2y, it implies that 6y is equal to 4 over 3, y is equal to 2 over 9. Then the total extracted, total extracted would be equal to 2 over 3, the one we got by the first 50 portion plus 2 over 9. This one will be equal to 8 over 9 or 0 0.89 grams. Remember, when we use the 100 portion was in the first part, we got 0 0.8. We have seen that when we divided the ether into two portions of 50s and we used them consecutively, we got a better yield of 0 0.89 than when we used it as a single portion of 100 and we got 0 0.80 grams. It implies that extracting the solvent used in portions gives a better yield than when we used it as one single portion. Example 2, 50 grams of a substance Y was dissolved in water to make 1,000 centimeter cubed of a solution. If partition coefficient between water and ether is 0 0.2, calculate the mass of Y extracted by shaking with 500 centimeter cubed of ether, then it be with two successive portion of 250 centimeter cubed of ether. The scenario is you have a thousand centimeter cubed of water with 50 grams of Y. Then we add Five hundred centimeter cubed of ether. Supposing X gram we are extracted by ether, here remain with fifty minus X. Our KD 
is equal to concentration of Y in water over concentration of Y in ether. Concentration because they started between water and ether. So water is above, ether is below. Between water and ether means that the KD is equal to concentration of Y in water over concentration of Y in ether. Between water and ether. If it was between ether and water, then it would be concentration of Y in ether over concentration of Y in water. But this time it is between water and ether. So KD is equal to concentration of Y in water over the concentration of Y in ether. This one is going to be concentration of Y in water, which is 50 minus X over a thousand over X in 500 X over 500 is equal to 0 0.2 or is equal to 2 over over 10. It means that 50 minus x over 2x is equal to 2 over 10 by cross multiplication. 10 into 50 minus x is equal to 2 times 2x. 500 minus 10 x is equal to 4 x. 14 x is equal to 500. x is equal to 500 over 14 which will be equal to 35.7 grams. So, 35.7 grams will be extracted by 500 centimeter cubed of ether. Part D, this time we have 250 centimeter cubed of ether and 1000 centimeter cubed of water containing 50 grams of Y. So if X goes here, then it will remain with 50 minus X. Our KD remains concentration of Y in the water, which will be equal to 50 minus x over 1000 over x over 250 will be equal to 2 over 10, 0 0.2. It means that 50 minus x over 4x will be equal to 2 over 10. Then uh, 10 into 50 minus x is equal to 8x, then 18x is equal to 500 and x is equal to 27.8 grams. Mass of y that remained in the water will be equal now to 50 minus 27.8 remaining with 22 grams remaining in the water our new standard is going to be a thousand centimeter cubed of water plus 22.2 grams of Y. Supposing K go here, here remain with 22.2 minus K. This will be uh, going to another 250 centimeter cubed of Ether, the second portion. Again, from our KD will be equal to 22.2 minus K over 1000 over K 
over 250 will be equal to 2 over 10. It implies that 22 point 10 into 22.2 minus k is equal to 4k times 2 which is equal to 8k. It means that 18k 8 plus 10k would be equal to 222 grams. Then k will be equal to 222 over 18 which will be equal to 12 point three grams. Then total extracted total extracted extracted by two successive successive 250 centimeter portion is of ether is equal to 27.8 plus 12.3 which is equal to 1040 grams Remember, when we use the 500 portion once, we got 35.7 grams. When we use the 500 portion, divided into two portions of 250 each, and we extract, we get 40 centimeter cubed, which agrees with our conclusion that when extracting solvent is used in portions rather than in one portion, you get a better yield. Example three, part A, state distribution law. States that at a constant temperature, a solute distributes itself between the two miscible solvents at a constant ratio, provided that none of the solvent is saturated Two, the solute is in the same molecular state in both solvents. B, describe how the distribution coefficient for butane 1 4 diuric acid, succinic acid between the water and isoxane can be determined. The procedure, a given volume of V of esoxysane is added to a given volume of V1 of aqueous solution containing X grams of succinic acid. Shaken and allowed to settle to reach equilibrium. Two, the two layers are separated by separating funnel. The aqueous layer is titrated with standard sodium hydroxide. Standard means the molarity of sodium hydroxide is known. Using phenolphthalein indicator because butane one for the weak acid is a weak acid. If you are titrated with sodium hydroxide, you must use phenolphthalein indicator to determine the mass of Y remaining in water. If Y is remaining in water, then X minus Y will be extracted by SOXY, the same. Then KD is equal to concentration of SOXYN, which is equal to Y over V1 over the concentration of succinic acid in ESA, which is X minus y over v and this one will be equal to y v over v1 into 
x minus y. The process for determining k is always the same. Always you defer at this point what you titrate with. Iodine is titrated with sodium fuel sulfate using starch indicator. Ammonia, a weak base, is titrated with standard hydrochloric acid using methyl orange as the indicator. Weak acid like butyric acid, butane 1,4 diuric acid, ethanoic acid is titrated with standard sodium hydroxide solution using phenolphthalein as the indicator. A hundred centimeter tube double solution containing 30 grams of substance Z. Calculate the mass of Z that can be extracted by shaking the solution with a hundred centimeter tube of ethox ethane. B, 250 centimeter portion is of ethox ethane. The distribution coefficient of Z between Ethoxyacin and water is 5. So the scenario is 100 centimeter cubed of water plus 30 grams of Z. Then we add uh, part 1, part A, we add 100 centimeter cubed of ether. So if X goes here, here I remain with 30 minus X, there were 30, then X went here. Then our KD is the concentration of Z between ether over concentration of Z in water. This is equal to 5, so 5 is equal to x over 100 over 30 minus x 30 minus x over 100 so it means that 5 into 30 minus x is equal to x 6x is equal to 150 x is equal to 25 grams. In the first part, we extract 25 grams. Then the second part, this time we are using 50 centimeter cube of ether first. Our kid which is 5 will be equal to x over 50 over 30 minus x over 100. So 5 into 30 minus x will be equal to 2x. 7x will be equal to 150. x will be equal to 21.4. Then mass, mass, that remained remained in water will be equal to 30 minus 21.4 6 9 minus 1 8 8.6 then the second scenario we shall have 8.6 in, in water, then y, then y, y comes here, here I remain with 8.6 minus y, and therefore 5 is equal to concentration of z in isa, which is y over 50 over 8.6 minus y this will be the same as 2y 
over 8.6 minus y it means that 5 into 8.6 minus y is equal to 2y 7y is equal to 5 times 8.6 y is equal to 6.1 then total extracted will be equal to 21.4 plus 6.1 which will be 572 27 point 27.5 so in the first in the first part extracting using 100 we got 25 in the second part extracting using 50 50 portion is we get 27.5